best day in the world. The best day in the world is New Horn Day. New Horn Day, congratulations. So you're gonna get it and you're just gonna rip it open and start playing. Hold on. I wanna show you some tips that are really important, especially on a beautiful horn like an Adams, to, to work on the break-in process so you get the best enjoyment out of your instrument for years to come. Stay tuned to this video and I'm gonna show you some more. Thanks. everybody, it's Trent Austin from Austin Custom Brass. I hope you're having an awesome day out there today. I am, and I just hope all is well. Uh, we are opening up for appointments as of tomorrow. On our web store, there's a, a sign-up sheet for appointments. We have limited availability for the next uh, probably month or so. Sign that up, and we can't wait to see you in the shop. So you just ordered a horn, and, and of course, to all of our customers out there, thanks so much for your great support of the shop. You just ordered a horn, and the inclination is when you get your new horn is to rip it open. You know, I gotta get this horn out. I gotta get this horn out. I gotta play. So I'm gonna grab my, grab the horn. Hold on, and I'm gonna play. Oh wait, it's in the bag. Um, and I'm using Adams today because they're, the Adams trumpets are made so well. I wanted to use an Adams because of some of the tolerances that they have. So you got your beautiful Adams. In fact. This is an Adam Sonic trumpet. Um, so the tendency is to grab your mouthpiece, put it right in and start playing. Hold on. There's some important things to check out when you get a new instrument and especially for the break-in of, of a new instrument. If you get a new car, more often than not, a lot of car companies will tell you to take it easy, at least on a, a combustion gasoline engine, for the first thousand miles as the engine conditions itself, it breaks in to not push the car, to not um, to make sure that the fluid levels are always, you know, on par with the factory specifications and so on and so forth. Trumpet is exactly the same thing. Pistons on a trumpet are just like the pistons on a car. So we can't just jump into the horn especially a horn like an Adams that has such tight tolerances and expect that it's going to be okay. Um, a couple things we see with, with our customers with Adams is that when they get them, the Adams valve block, because it's made so precisely and has incredible compression, it's made with very tight tolerances. So when you're breaking in a piston and you're doing this action, you're actually fitting the piston to fit on the inside of the walls. So your finger motion will determine the exact position of how the valve is going up and down. And because of that, you might see, and I'm not sure you'll see it here. Um, let me just zoom this in on the camera. This has gone through a little break-in process already at the shop, but I'm going to see if I can get, okay, can't get that zoomed. Okay. You could see that. I don't know if you can see my finger. There's a little bit of, of, a, of a residue on that piston. There's nothing to be concerned with. Um, some of our customers kind of like freak out when they see that. Just remember, this is a brand new piston. So every time you're pushing it down the first month or two, you're going to be fitting it into your hand position. That's why um, at trade shows, I often bring my horn at train shows to show just how beautiful the Adams block is once it's fully acclimated to the to the new customer. Um, my Copernicus, for instance, has the best valves I've ever owned on any instrument. It, but it took a while for me to get that feeling of smoothness and, and, and ease and also consistency. So the tendency is that the valves might need to be broken in. And how you do that? Well, for instance, on the Adams trumpets, they come with... Uh, a little care kit, which includes valve oil, slide grease uh, for your first and third and main slide. I'm going to open this up now and just give you a quick demonstration on what I would do when I got the horn. So um, they use the Meinl Schmidt oil, which is great. I personally use Ultra Pure Light on my, my Adams, but I've had good success with either. And I think any high quality valve oil 
will be fine on this horn as long as you do the following. Some people don't oil their valves on the atoms because they're so nice, but that's like not changing the oil on your car. I think valve oil is relatively inexpensive. Uh, valve rebuilds are not inexpensive. So check this out. So when I get the horn and I'm going to play it, before I even play it, I'm going to take each valve out. And this is so simple. This is why this microfiber cloth is provided. And I just take the, the valve and I just twist it a few times. That takes off any of the additional residue from that break-in. And I'm going to do this every day for a while. And then I'm just going to lightly coat the valve with oil. Just light. You don't have to douse it. You don't have to flood the valve. Over-oiling is just like putting too much oil in your, your car. Um, and then I'm just going to let the valve sit down. Tighten it up. I mean, the difference between the first is, this is impossible to feel on a video, but the difference between the first and second valve of me doing that is um, the, amazing. So if you ever get any new horn, when you get it from, from any shop, hopefully if you get it from us, we always check the horns and oil them before they go out. But even so, they can dry out in transit where the, the valves will be dry. Playing on dry valves not only affects compression and the amount of compression you see, um, it, it greatly affects the performance of the instrument. So I'm going to oil the valves. I'm going to make sure that my slide, like this is nice and tight. Tuning slides should be tight. They shouldn't be loose. They shouldn't be like a trombone slide. Nice and tight because you're not going to move it that much. If you ever want to loosen up, simple pro tip here is drop one drop of valve oil on that slide and it speeds up the motion. But a tight slide, tight compression, really important. In addition to oiling the valves and greasing the slides, take your valve oil and just take and pour maybe 10 drops. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What I'm doing here is now I'm coating the inside with oil. And I'm going to blow. What that's doing is taking the oil and just pushing it through the lead pipe. Because the lead pipe and the tuning slide, if you watched our video on red rot, the lead pipe and the tuning slide are the two places that rot out first. But doing that, you're coating the inside with oil, which not only improves the playability of the horn, but also makes it less apt to having red rot. Um, so that is important. So you oil the valves, you're good to go for a while. I highly recommend you taking your cloth every morning or afternoon, whenever you play your instrument, every day for a few weeks, taking your valve out, wiping it off, and then putting the oil on again. At the end of like maybe the second week, give your horn a bath. We'll link a video uh, in this description to show you how to do that. It's really quick and easy. Also, maybe swab out the casings and then get rid of any extra filaments of the break-in process. If you see things on your valves, don't freak out. It's not a big deal. It is part of that break-in process. Some companies send horns already fully broken in, 100% broken in. But when we put them on our Magna Helic machine, we see that. We see compression loss. So we... we reason why we love Adam so much is we prefer really tight horns going to the customer. So that's a little tip, or a few tips on the break-in process. If you have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at info at austincustombrass.com or call us 816-410-0826. Thanks so much for your fantabulous support of the shop. We can't wait to welcome you to our Adams family soon. And until the meantime, Take care, everybody. Ciao.